grabbing at him like <laughs> right. he's the most popular guy in town he's like putting his like every cash he can fit in every square inch of the women he's like dropping it on them or putting them in their bras and they start like tugging at him and attacking him and he's just loving all the attention that he's getting which actually starts yeah. pissing off like the men of milan who like pull up on their motor bikes and start a brawl uh in, in which you know silva and woody strode just need to punch their shit and you know <laughs> throw the dudes down and pistol whip them and it's yeah. uh filled in de leo's like kind of preferred style of like the action just being not graceful no. but just very yeah. sudden and messy and chaotic he loves these kind of like dutch angle handheld shots of like a fist just going into someone's face or like a fucking headshot going off in the middle of a crowd or something and it, and, and it feels yeah. like not choreographed and i don't mean that in an insulting way i mean it just like it feels very natural like the, like he had them go like all right so you're gonna punch him and then maybe just scuffle a little bit and figure it out it all it, it feels very natural compared to obviously anything that you'd see with like van damme or jackie chan um, but even other films where it's not like totally action precision oriented, uh, it, th- these do feel messier. Um, and I think it, I think it, 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 it it's, uh, it really works for kind of the, the theme of the characters a lot of the time, because as, as calculated as I think a lot of these guys think they are, um, all the, all of these plots become incredibly messy on purpose. So it, it does feel like, uh, that's just kind of inside them as characters, but they, you know, on the on the outside, they don't really let it out a lot of the time. Um, yeah, well, well and, and I, I think to Leo to too, with with these characters, was very much trying to hone in on the sort of palpable kind of like anger in sure. Italy at the time, and they yeah. definitely wanted to provide this sort of cathartic outlet of like these guys who, you know, feel a little bit more in control, but then suddenly will just like explode with the kind of violence they are at and chaos they are actually seeing on the streets, and they're not yeah. as actually in control as they think they are. I think that there's, you know, a, a sort of consistent point being made with as much planning and organized crime is uh, taking place here that like at, at a certain point, there's going to be collateral damage. There's going to be pointless carnage. And um, the uh, that that really starts to sort of uh, cohere um, in into the film when we start spending a little bit more time with uh, Luca, who mm-hmm. is functionally the character being hunted by these uh, two hitmen, and I do like at first that it's he's he doesn't actually realize he's being hunted, and we're spending time with him, and we actually are like this is the guy who like <laughs> organized a heroin like sh- yeah. shipment uh, heist, like it's like dude, he's just trying to like recruit as many beautiful sort of like hippie free love Italian girls um, <laughs> he he can to, to to work for him like the girl Trini who wakes up where I loved the set decoration where she has a poster of JFK and Che Guevara right next to each other and, yeah. and it just says and is there heaven after all did you meet there you know yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and he listens um uh, to his girls and he tries to like actually get them off the streets and he's kind of surprisingly sometimes kind of well liked by them and and, mm-hmm. and and the the performance by Mario is 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 quite charming and quite sweaty and he's often and, like uh, shown like there's a, a a couple scenes where he's in bed with a naked woman and then talking to another naked woman on the other side of the phone and they're kind yeah. of arguing <laughs> about it but he always comes off as he still comes off as like kind of funny and charming, even though, you know, he's just as much of a like he's his thing is his rough around the edges quality is being a womanizer, essentially. Um, yes. But but and, I will say and he's obviously a lot exploiting more women by, by, by being by being a pimp. But he's also yeah. like trying to be like, you know, he's trying to be like not the pimp who like hits people yeah. or is like rude or, you know, he, yeah, he, he gets into pimp. some hand gesture heavy arguments. And but like the, the, the most violent he ever gets is just kind of like slapping dudes around who are like disrespecting him yeah, and like pinching their cheeks and shit like that yeah he, he really doesn't have like he's not searching for the violence it, it finds him and then he kind of you know, not at retaliates. all you're like dude why you're like dude why are these insanely violent hitmen gonna kill this guy like <laughs> yeah. he's you know and, and, and he starts hearing through the grapevine by being like assaulted in a very like slapstick kind of manner that the, he, he finds out the two americans are looking to kill him and we do find out that he does have a a little bit of a of an animalistic rage inside of him that just kind of barely comes out sometimes but when it does again it's not directed at anyone you know that's going to cause any sort of 
collateral damage yeah. actually the first time we see it is that incredible detail i don't know that i've ever seen in another movie where he headbutts the rotary phone so oh, yeah. hard that he smashes it <laughs> and he what's so funny is that luca that headbutt move becomes a very strong um a move in his repertoire for defense <laughs> yes say. he does it a few times yes i can't <laughs> wait to talk about the chase sequence i'll leave it there but uh yeah, yeah. holy shit does that guy have a strong forehead <laughs> Yeah, one of the strongest I've and, uh, yeah. ever seen. Oh, absolutely. And I also, I do like that they're kind of in the beginning here doing a back and forth between uh, uh, Sil- Silva and Strode and then um, a dwarf. Like, we're learning about um, Luca's family life, what his motivations are, all of that. And they're kind of cross-cutting between them uh, until they finally collide about, like, I don't know, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way through the film. Um, but it is interesting because it does feel like you're learning about Luca and you're kind of learning to like him a lot of the time anyway. And then when they cut back to, to Henry and, uh, and Woody, you're like, oh yeah, this, like he has a death approaching, you know, he, he has to look out. Um, exactly. Something is going to happen eventually. So I do like, this that. is a ticking time clock kind of situation. Yeah. Like these guys are eventually going to, um, find him and we that really clicks in when around the midpoint of the movie it does shift perspectives from uh you know silva hitting up the strip clubs and strode just beating up some italian dudes um and it really does become about uh mario as um the pimp who as we've been saying in the context of kind of like the italian underground or the italian mafia